Welcome to the Reality Revolution. Today, we're going to talk about vibrations. In particular, the importance of vibrations in our own psychic development. This comes from a great book by Robert A. Ferguson called ESP for Everyone. A really comprehensive guide on how to develop your own psychic abilities. This particular lesson deals with vibrations and understanding how vibrations are critical in developing our own psychic power. The importance of vibrations. Understanding vibrations is the first step toward the expansion of your new consciousness, your new intuitive abilities. It's near impossible to fine tune your instinct until you understand the importance of vibrations in all psychic development. If there were no vibrations, there couldn't be either a psychic or a physical world. To function well in this world, we need to know many things. Take mathematics, for instance. If you don't learn to add numbers, you can't subtract or multiply. Without addition, subtraction, and multiplication, you could never learn to divide. Lack of this knowledge would certainly hamper the kind of growth and success most of us desire. Just as mathematics are needed for material success, a basic knowledge of vibrations is needed for psychic success. You must first learn about vibrations before you can understand symbols, and symbols before you can understand clairvoyance, clairaudience, and clairsentience. Each of the lessons that follow is a logically planned step that gives you complete, not partial use of the instinctive powers that can make each day brighter, more prosperous, and happier. Partial development of your psychic abilities may be not only frustrating but also a hindrance. Partial or incomplete psychic information can lead you down the wrong path to unhappy consequences. You should desire to gain complete psychic knowledge, for it is there that you find the secret to spiritual and material enrichment. Recently I watched a mother plead with her husband not to let their son drive the car. She didn't know why she felt this way and couldn't give the boy's father a reason for not allowing him to take the car. Fifteen minutes later, a telephone call informed the parents that the boy had been in a serious automobile accident just blocks from home. What was it this mother felt but couldn't put into words? Why didn't she sense what was going to happen rather than just the feeling of danger? Could this accident have been prevented? Of course, the accident could have been prevented and it should have been. A psychic warning was given and then ignored. The result of this unfortunate situation was injury and destruction, all because a vibration was ignored. What are vibrations? My definition of vibrations given in the previous chapter, a periodic impulsation or wave-like oscillation of electrical energy, may not be as clearly in your mind as I would like. You may have wondered what this has to do with psychic development. The definition also sounds relatively scientific to many a beginning student, but it is a literal truth that vibrations are everything. I hope to acquaint you with the importance of vibrations in your personal and practical psychic development. How science regards vibrations. Science does have a law that explains for its purpose what vibrations are. It says that all matter is composed of atoms, neutrons, electrons, and protons. The manifestation or character of all matter is determined by how the neutrons and protons revolve within the atom. Science may at times use the word energy rather than vibration, but its meaning is the same. I would conclude with the scientists that there is but one force in the universe, but it is a force that expresses itself in various forms of matter. How the psychic regards vibrations. The psychic does not disagree with the scientific definition of vibrations, but I will elaborate on my first definition. The first law of all creation is the energy called spirit. This energy or spirit is manifested in an unseen way as well as through physical matter. Thus, a thought creates a vibration in the same way as the hammer that strikes the anvil. Vibrations are called by many names. Some call them energy, some spirit, and some call these vibrations God 
regardless of the word you choose to describe everything there is nothing else it may be difficult for us to comprehend that every bit of matter stone wood glass metal plants or flesh is formed by vibrating energy atoms neutrons and protons but because these things are composed of energy they do vibrate every object's vibrations manifests its character by the type of energy it produces physically we cannot feel a sound in the air hear a thought or feel the magnetism of a magnet with our fingertips but these vibrations do exist vibrations travel through space in much the same manner that a ripple travels across water after you've dropped a stone into it vibrations travel in all directions sometimes very rapidly and sometimes very slowly the only difference between one kind of matter and another is simply the number and frequency of the vibrations that pass into or out of it consider this fact our bodies are composed of vibrations and we live in the midst of other vibrations our minds our bodies and our spirits in fact the whole of existence are merely one thing vibrations psychic vibrations are the same as such physical vibrations as radio and television transmissions psychic vibrations simply travel at a greater speed than physical vibrations an example of how physical vibrations come to us is seen if you go to your window and watch the automobiles driving up and down the street the cars you see are of different colors because what you perceive is the reflection of light at several different wavelengths now that isn't mysterious is it nature blessed us with this gift of sight and the ability to visualize physical objects it can be described in very complex terms or as simply as i have just done it depends on your point of view but for the purpose of these lessons it's best to keep it as simple as possible the vibration of physical objects create mental images vibrations that are less concrete such as a thought the future consequences of a present act or vibrations of a physical act taking place at a distance that cannot be known by the use of physical senses are received and comprehended through the use of your psychic senses in much the same manner as you received the colored images of the automobiles with your physical sight receiving information psychically is no more mysterious than receiving information via physical senses when you consider that everything is composed of vibrations the ability to attune to the unseen as well as the seen isn't as unreasonable as it may have seemed when you first began to read this chapter vibrations through psychic senses you've already learned that you receive psychic impressions or vibrations by means of your psychic senses psychic senses are unseen duplicates of physical senses seeing the colors of the automobiles was a matter of vibrations acting upon your physical senses and making an image in your conscious mind psychic impressions are vibrations that bounce back from any place or thing you think about your reaction to vibrations from the unseen except that the image of the former is first produced in the subconscious mind the automobiles produced an image that appeared external or at a distance from you the psychic image can be seen either objectively or subjectively in the case of a subjective image it appears to be in the center of your forehead often called the third eye this internal or external image is apprehended through clairvoyance which will be discussed all of your psychic impressions are received because of your attunement with the vibrations directing your thoughts to a person place or thing your mind which is not restricted by distance reaches out to mingle with the vibrations from what you are thinking of thus your psychic impression is carried to your subconscious mind where it either produces an image clairvoyance a sound or sounds clairaudience or feeling clairsentience i have so far discussed vibrations mainly from a physical point of view there is however another popular point of view the religious one your own common sense should dictate which theory you choose to accept or reject i see no conflict between the various views of the origin of vibrations a religious point of view to explain the religious view of vibrations it is necessary to go back briefly to the creation of the world 
The book of Genesis from the Bible states that in the beginning there was God. We go on to read that God then created the world and all living things during seven days. The religionist asks the question, if in the beginning there was God and nothing else, what did he create the world out of? An assumption is that he must have created all things from himself, hence all things in the universe are God, each a different expression of him. You are probably familiar with the widespread teaching that there is nothing in the universe but God. This belief is prevalent in most Oriental religions as well as in the newer Western churches. Those who accept the theory that vibrations are different manifestations of God generally believe that psychic phenomena are a result of the God within you recognizing the God in another person, place, or object. I leave it to you to choose between religious theories, a combination, or none of them, regardless of your own particular standpoint on the matter. However, keep in mind that vibrations absolutely exist. Your opinion, whatever it is, cannot erase the fact of their existence, nor can it change their character. Vibrations are everything. How to be at the right place at the right time. Many an executive has attributed his success to being at the right place at the right time. Granted, they must have recognizable ability before they are promoted. But what of those who have similar ability but are overlooked for promotions? Steve was working in the production control department of a large manufacturing company. He liked his job, but he had a growing feeling that he should make every effort to move into the manufacturing area of the company an area in which he had no previous work experience. Steve followed his hunch. He talked with supervisors about making the career change. Steve had no apparent reason for requesting the new job assignment, which would necessitate a demotion. He could only say, I just believe that it would be the best interest of the company and of myself to make the change. Steve was at least given the transfer. Within one year, Steve himself was promoted to the management team. Steve explained his success in this manner. I followed a hunch, and that hunch put me in the right place at the right time. It was a matter of timing. It was the smartest move I have ever made. But I needed constant reassurance from my wife that sometimes it's necessary to take one step backward in order to take two steps forward. Let me give another example. A small church was holding services in leased quarters. A sudden urge to move to new quarters swept the church, but it was impossible. Their lease ran several months before it expired, and there was no hope that the landlord would cancel the lease. In the meantime, unknown to the church congregation, their landlord had been contacted by a real estate firm that wanted the building for a new franchise office, and they were offering a much higher rental than was being paid by the church. The landlord asked the congregation if they would find new church quarters, if he paid all moving fees, and so on congregation agreed to move within 30 days, even though they had not even looked for a new church location. Within a week, the congregation found an empty building that contained not only a kitchen and nursery school, but offices on the side street that could be rented out. Because of a complicated legal action, the building had stood long vacant. It was rented to the church on a month-to-month -month basis for a small token payment. Several months passed before the divorce proceedings were concluded. At the conclusion of the legal action, the $125,000 building was offered for sale to the church with no down payment and monthly payments that were less than the previous rent. The unexplainable urge felt by the congregation was the prelude to what they could only term a miracle. When you have feelings similar to Steve's and the church's congregation, pay attention. You are attuned to vibrations that are leading you to a richer and more abundant life. Being at the right place at the right time doesn't happen by chance. How to avert approaching danger. It is a very rare occasion when you do not receive forewarning of approaching danger. The potential problem lies in your refusal to pay attention to the warning. In our previous example, because the mother couldn't give a rational explanation as to why the boy shouldn't drive the car, the father allowed it. But the serious accident could have been averted. Best knew she shouldn't drive to Los Angeles. She had just a feeling. She wanted to go so badly that she ignored the vibrations that were bombarding her and made the trip anyway. 
She spent six hours in a ditch before she was finally rescued from her accident. Dave, on the other hand, was driving to Las Vegas as he was about to go over a rise in the road. The feeling came over to him that he should slow down. As he proceeded slowly over the rise, he saw a car and trailer blocking the road. If he hadn't had the urge to slow down, or if he hadn't acknowledged it, what would have been the outcome? Dave paid attention to vibrations, and the vibrations served him in return. How to feel harmonious with your surroundings. How often have you, for no apparent reason, felt nervous and upset? How often have you felt uncomfortable in a friend's home? How many times have you had a negative feeling about people even before you meet them? Everyone has experiences such as these occasionally, but if they happen on a frequent basis, you can be sure that you do not have a sense of harmony with people, places, and things. There is usually no reason for you to dislike people or for them to dislike you upon a first meeting. The conflicted or negative feeling that you may have before meeting someone is caused by a difference in vibrations between yourself and the other party. Before the meetings takes place, you should take a moment. During this quiet moment, you should concentrate on having your vibration harmonized with the vibration of the person you're about to meet. It takes two to make an argument or a conflict, so you can make sure your half will not participate then proceed to your meeting with your happiest smile, knowing that you're on your way to greet a new friend. A few hours spent as a guest in a home where you feel great mental discomfort can seem an eternity. Not only that, but it can leave you with a feeling of complete exhaustion. You need not experience the discomfort again. Before you enter any new dwelling, you should Again, take a few quiet moments to project your vibrations into the home so that when you enter, you are immediately met with a feeling of friendliness, comfort, and rapport. When in the home, place your hand upon various objects and mentally say, I feel love vibrating from this object, and respond with love. You must be the master of overcoming negative vibrations wherever you meet them. One simple affirmative thought will harmonize the vibrations of any person, place, or thing. I project love, and I shall feel love in return. Most mental and emotional anguish is the result of an inability to cope with things you feel but cannot understand. It is sometimes very sad to see people so emotionally mixed up and unhappy when the tool to conquer this negativity is so close at hand. I believe it's overlooked because of its simplicity. It's not complicated enough to draw the attention. Surely there must be a mystery. Nothing so simple as projecting harmonizing vibrations could work. Give simplicity a chance. It does work. Give credence to an old adage. Truth is simply wonderful and yet so wonderfully simple. An individual exercise to increase your psychic sensitivity. Take 15 minutes daily to quiet your mind. During this time, touch various household objects. Lay your hand upon wood, metal, and glass. If you prefer the outdoors, touch a flower, a tree, the earth or a simple garden weed, you will have a physical sensation of heat, moisture, graininess or whatever. And if you concentrate, and this is the key to the exercise, you will find these objects give you an inner feeling, the sensation of differences in the vibration of the various objects you touch. You may become bored with this exercise and think that doing it once is sufficient. It isn't. Please do it daily for one full week. There are several reasons for this exercise, and you should avail yourself of its benefits. First, developing this feeling for the things around you is the first step toward developing clairsentience. Second, it harmonizes you with your surroundings. Your conscious effort to feel the character of the things around you leads you to loving those things. Believe it or not, when you love your surroundings, your surroundings love you in return. It would be a good idea to begin keeping a notebook of your experiences. Carefully note all of your thoughts and feelings. This notebook should be continued through these eight weeks of lessons. Keep notes on your group sessions and on your psychic experiences outside during the rest of the week. It will later prove to be an invaluable reference tool. A group exercise to increase your sensitivity. 
When your group meets for their first working session, you may find it very difficult to keep the members on track. Some people are very inclined to get over anxious. This exuberance is commendable, but attempting to jump ahead invariably leads to disappointment in this case. They must learn first lessons first. Gather various objects from your home or garden so that you may have one of each for every member present. Some objects you might use are flowers, glasses, matches, toothpicks, envelopes, stamps, feathers, salt, sugar, or pencils. There are hundreds of suitable objects within a home. Your first step is to give each member of the group a match. For example, have the group sit for a few moments with eyes closed. After all is quiet, each member should tell of the feeling they receive from that object. Do the same with each object. Two hours is a sufficient length of time for your group to sit. If it is longer, people will become tired as well as bored, though there are always those who become so enthralled with their new adventures that they'll keep you up all night talking. I speak from experience, believe me. This really is not a beneficial beginning to serious psychic study. Each member of the group should also do the individual exercise described previously for the ensuing week. If anyone is unable to follow the course, faithfully politely suggest that he or she quit attending your sessions. What you're doing may or may not make complete sense to you at present, but it will as the lessons progress. Just take my word for it now. On the road to gain. Some very interesting things have happened to my students while carrying out this particular exercise, and you might find their experiences of value to you. Anna could never grow a flower garden that suited her, no matter what she did or how hard she worked. The neighbor's gardens were superior to hers. As her exercise, she walked around her garden and tried to feel what was different in each flower variety. Each day as she stroked the bloom, she was aware of a feeling of real love for each individual plant. This feeling gave her such an inner warmth that she continued long after the exercise week had ended. Suddenly, as if a miracle, new growth, color, and vitality were seen in her garden. You know, Bob, she said, it's true that you can feel vibrations from things. Love really does respond to love. Another lady who was having marital difficulties decided that the objects of her exercise would be the belongings of her husband. She brought her notebook to class at the end of the week for me to read. The first two days went something like this. Monday, pipe, nervousness, comb, dislike, aftershave, jealousy, Tuesday, magazine, sinking feeling, beer bottle, dizziness. Her daily notes continued in this negative vein for the entire week. It doesn't take a trained psychic to recognize the difference between the feelings of this particular lady and say those of a lady who loved her plants. Her notebook was filled with the feelings of a jealous, possessive wife toward her husband. She was not feeling the character of the items at all. She felt only her own inner negativity. This can be a real pitfall for the beginning student. This woman was unable to quiet her mind or harmonize her feelings before she began her daily exercises, and so psychic development was really out of the question for her. She was not strong enough mentally or emotionally to let go of her baser feelings. Here is an example of how personal feelings can have a more positive effect on things around you. My wife and I were at a garden nursery buying fruit trees to plant at the back of our house. In a gesture of kindness, the nurseryman offered my wife a small indoor plant that was going to be discarded because it was slightly misshapen. My wife liked the plant very much and took it home. It grew unbelievably and it became a very attractive plant. My wife decided that she'd like to share its beauty, so she moved it to the lobby of our church. The plant continued to grow until it reached a size that made it get in the way of members entering and leaving the church. Suddenly the plant began to die, and it was without sadness on the part of the many members who had to dodge around it to enter the church. My wife moved the plant back home. Within days it was again thriving. It seems obvious to me that the annoyance of church visitors had its effect on the plant, and as soon as it was removed, it thrived again. Thoughts and feelings, vibrations, are very real things, and they do register in the universe as surely as material objects. The two preceding examples do concern vibrations, but somewhat in reverse. For the purposes of this lesson, however, it is necessary that you do not direct your feelings to an object but rather allow feelings to come to you from the object. Differentiating between your own feelings and those that come to you from objects might be a bit difficult at the beginning, but persist 
in your practice. Have you ever wondered why you would like certain colors and not others? Why is it that everyone doesn't like the same colors? Each color is a reflection of a different vibration and your favorite colors are those that are closest in your own individualized vibration. It is this effect of color that will explain your group exercise turning up a great variety of feelings concerning a single object. Take for example a simple match with a red and blue striking head. If one person's vibration is entirely in attunement with red and blue, he or she might say, I feel warmth, vitality, or the like. Another person who does not like those colors might feel coldness or weakness. Trained psychics will not be influenced by their personal likes and dislikes, but an untrained individual will naturally feel these differences. Don't be dismayed or wonder who is correct and who isn't during this first lesson. You're just beginning on a new and exciting venture. At the end of the first week, you should feel more secure and peaceful. You will avert danger because you'll be paying attention to the vibrations protecting you. You may have more friends and should be forming a new and more prosperous future job plan. Don't wait for success to find you. Use the small amount of psychic knowledge I've just given you. Begin looking for success, happiness, love, and prosperity and expect to find it. Now, what I've found in the spiritual community in particular is that the word vibration often becomes a sort of cliche. It's used oftentimes without a true understanding of its meaning. In most cases, when we're discussing vibration in my own particular experience, the way it relates to you is a feeling. Now, there are some very, very good psychics that have thoughts and visual things that come up, but when you're tuning into vibrations, in most cases, you're tuning into a feeling. The higher the frequency of your energy or vibration, the lighter you feel in your physical, emotional, and mental bodies. You experience greater personal power, clarity, peace, love, and joy. You have little, if any, discomfort or pain in your physical body, and your emotions are easily dealt with. There is a law of vibration in the universe. There are a number of different models of different laws of the universe we've discussed. You can also read about the law of vibration in the Kabbalion. The universal law of vibration posits that everything, every atom is in constant motion vibrating at a specific frequency. As spiritual author Shannon Kaiser explains, the speed or rate at which something vibrates is referred to as its frequency, with the only difference between one object and another being the rate of its vibration. You can think of this frequency as vibrational energy. And according to Tanya Carol Richardson, who wrote Self-Care for Empaths, someone's energy or the energy of a physical space or a group of people isn't something that you can see or touch, but it's something you sense, feel, and react to. The whole idea behind this law is not only that we all have a specific vibrational frequency, but further, that we can learn to adjust our vibration if we're caught in a low vibrational experience or scenario. The more you attune to your own energy, the more you see how your vibes affect your entire experience. You can use this for manifesting. In order to manifest anything, we must match the vibration of what it is we're looking for. You will only attract to yourself energy that matches up with your energy. Like attracts like, and particularly vibration attracts vibration, like vibration attracts like vibration. You will only attract vibrations that match up with your vibration. So you want to manifest more wealth, but you constantly think about how you need more money. Remember that your thoughts also have vibrational energy. The thought, I need more money, actually holds a vibration of lack and could lead to a self-fulfilling prophecy. We have the power to dictate the frequency of our being by directing our own thoughts. You can use vibration to navigate situations as indicated by this chapter by Ferguson, where you are driving over a hill and you sense that something's wrong, you feel the vibration of it, so you slow down and you avoid an accident. Tapping into this universal law can help you figure out how you feel in a situation or scenario at any given time. Once you discern what feels high vibration to you, like attitudes, places, and people that feel connecting and healthy and exciting, it's easier to sense when you're in the presence of a high vibration. You can also use it for managing your emotions. Emotions hold vibrational frequencies and working with this law can help you navigate them. 
Emotions are powerful guides to shift us into a higher, more balanced state of being. There are no bad feelings. It's all energy that wants to move forward. When we feel anxious or stressed, this is simply energy that wants to move through us and be released. The law of vibration helps us recognize when we're moving through dense, very heavy emotions so that we can let them go and maintain a higher frequency. So the question is, how can we raise our vibration? We can take care of ourself. When you do this regularly, you raise your vibration and show up in the world in a clearer, stronger way through self-care. The nice thing about it is it can look different for everybody, whether it's taking a weekly bath ritual or prioritizing getting out into nature or journaling. When you take care of yourself, your vibration will reflect it. Secondly, nourish your body. I recommend nourishing your body with a high vibrational diet and movement routine. Heavy and unhealthy foods can lower our energy as you've probably noticed after a particularly rich meal different for everybody and you start to realize what foods bring you up and down healthy whole foods can leave you feeling energetically light and not bogged down and third find what feels good for you and do it one of the best ways to build up a solid foundation of being in alignment and raising your vibration is to focus on daily activities that make you feel good and balanced it's not selfish to do this you're raising your vibration it's going to be different for everyone, but try to focus on joy, love, and peace. These vibrations are high vibrations, and they help you feel healthier and happier. The fourth thing is to meditate. Emotions are one of the primary drivers of our energetic frequency or vibration. Picking up or deepening meditation practice can improve our ability to regulate emotions, let things go, and raise our vibration at the same time. And finally, Cut out low vibrational people, places, and things. If you're watching a low vibrational TV show, you know what it is. Stop watching it if it's drawing down your vibration. Don't underestimate the effect the external world has on your vibrations. The more you work with the law of vibration, the more you'll be able to hold your own vibe steady regardless of outside influence. Those who are new to this work or are highly sensitive might find this somewhat challenging. It's impossible to cut low vibrational situations out of your life altogether. But when you do, you have the ability to do so, avoiding people, places, and things that drain your energy and give you those feelings of a lower vibration, then you can move away from it. Bottom line is, vibration shows us that everything is energy and we can match the energy of anything we're looking to manifest remember vibration we'll definitely discuss this further this is a introductional discussion of vibration i was at a recent uh, spiritual event and i just found that people were mentioning vibration a lot without a real discussion of what it meant so i wanted to talk about it a little bit as to what it means in most cases we're talking about feelings but it's a little bit different for everybody and it's a definite part of tuning your psychic powers you can find all episodes of the reality revolution at therealityrevolution.com i'm sending high vibrational energy to everyone that's listening through my voice to you take this vibration and let it raise you into a feeling of joy bliss peace and happiness raise your vibration by the things you do by the things you think by the people you hang out with and the things you watch and watch your entire world change in the vibrational frequencies around you Thank you so much for listening. It's always an honor and welcome to the Reality Revolution.